Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Ask Your Pediatrician. This is Dr. Paul. What we're going to go over today is a rash called petechiae or purpura, and in this case it's actually a case of hives. It's a perfect example to illustrate the difference between petechiae and purpura, which is a non-blanching rash, and your more typical hives or viral rash. So tell me when this started. Started on Tuesday morning around 9 a.m. He started to get a few red patches right across his belly and a few sporadic on his legs. Okay. And um, has he been sick prior to that? He had it just a runny nose. Okay. Um, we went camping. So about Sunday morning, he had a fever and he started his runny nose. Okay, so started with fever and runny nose yep. and then this rash appeared. Yep. on Tuesday. On Tuesday. Yep. And I know you were here in the office a couple days ago. Yep. And uh, they did some blood work and at that yep. point they were pretty sure this was a viral illness. Yep. Uh, and I remember talking to you on the phone that it was getting purplish. Right, right. And, um, and that was concerning because we know that can right, be bad. Right, bad exactly. So you had a fussy baby. Fussy and baby. Uh, this little fellow is only seven months old, yep. fussy with fever and then a purplish rash, yep. and you were absolutely right to call okay. because sometimes that can be meningococcus, and meningococcus is a bacterial infection that can kill you like in 24 hours. Yeah, not good. And so I'm absolutely yeah. happy you called. Awesome. So a as we look at these purplish lesions, when I rub really hard with my finger, you can see they turn white turn normal skin color. The purple goes away momentarily and then it returns. And here's another illustration. You know, kind of turns to normal skin color and then as I let go the rash reappears. Any rash that you can make blanch, so you can make it go away, that's okay. Especially, we'll take a look at this little guy's face here. Um, he's still, I mean he's not super happy but he's still pretty alert. And that's always a good sign. When you have that bad rash that doesn't blanch and a kid who's just like between irritable and out of it, okay. that's the worry. So if you'll come look at my hand here, now this is just a freckle, but let's say that was purple and I was to push as hard as I could. You can see there's no way of getting rid of that freckle. If that was purple or pink, you can't make it blanch. That's the kind of rash that could be meningococcus that you don't want to wait till tomorrow. You get right in. If your doctor's office is open, you get right in. If they're not, you're into the urgent care or emergency room where a doctor can take a close look and make sure you're not missing something like meningococcus. My friend mentioned you said you can use a clear glass also if you do. Yeah. She said you taught her that trick and I don't know if you remember that because you talked to a lot of people. She had me roll it across his leg so I could see it disappear. That's a with brilliant clear, idea. Clear you, glass. You can do that pressure with glass right. and you can see the rash disappear right. or not. So that was really so. helpful. You know, I learn from my mothers all the time. <laughs> it's like, oh, did I say that? Okay, I'll, I'll take did. credit for you it. You did say it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, this particular re reaction, because we were, we've evaluated this young fellow twice in two days, this has been progressive, and what's happening here is we've got bright red, pink, new rash that's actually warm to touch, if you look at this rash. And as that rash disappears, it leaves a bluish, sort of almost a bruised looking purple rash, which you can see areas that are sort of purplish. Oh, this is a good one too. Here's the arm that has both the pink and the purple. Now we could take his shirt off and you'd see his whole body is that way. Basically this is hives. This is an allergic reaction to the virus. So what we have here is a viral infection and his body is mounting an immune response as well as an allergic response. And, and hives come and go. A classic hive lesion, you can see one on this shoulder where there's got a little central clearing. It's kind of a little more whitish in the middle and red around it. That's sort of a, an example of a target lesion that you see with hives. The key with hives is in general your child is not that ill. Now he happens to be somewhat ill because of his viral illness and fever, so that's what makes this particular situation both confusing and very important to have it evaluated by somebody that can really make sure that you're, you're not missing that petechiae and purpura, the non-blanching rash that can be associated with meningococcus. 
What we're going to do for this, since we know it's hives, if you're at home and you have a hives-like reaction, maybe a mild one, you're going to use something like Claritin or Benadryl, mm -hmm. just those basic anti-hive, anti-allergy type medicines, and sometimes that's enough. In a more severe case like this, we're using prednisone. It's a stronger anti-inflammatory, mm -hmm. but you definitely would not want to be getting your hands on prednisone without having a doctor evaluate first because prednisone can cause problems if you're giving it to a child who has a bad infection. Mm -hmm. So that's the key, that's why I wanted you to come absolutely. in. And thank you for doing that, yes, coming in. Absolutely. And uh, he's a trooper. Now, of course, you should know that prednisone can make you really grumpy. So if you get like beyond grumpy, <laughs> so some kids who are so irritable on prednisone that they want to be picked up. And as soon as you pick them up, they want to be put down. And as soon as you put them down, they want to be picked up. If that scenario happens to where he's just more miserable than he was right. before, okay. then just stop it. Okay. And this is going to run its course. Because it's related to the viral illness, viral illnesses often run for seven to ten days. Okay. Unfortunately, it's possible his hives could last for seven to ten days. Or since we're on our fourth day yeah. or something like that. You know, the other main causes of allergic reactions, we think of medications. Uh, and then we think of certain foods like yep. peanuts and eggs and strawberries, yeah. but usually the peanuts is the top of the list or, or shellfish. Okay. If you have an allergic reaction to a food, and you stop that food, right. within two, three days it's gone. Interesting. So okay. even though he, I think he had strawberries a while ago. On Sunday, yeah. You know, today is Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I can count. Uh, <laughs> Congratulations. This is good. You know, medical school is tough, uh, I but I got through it. Good job. But yeah, but um, it would have gone away if it was just from that strawberry okay. that he had four days ago. So I'm, I'm fairly confident that this is hives related to his viral illness. So it would look just like this with a food allergy, possibly, but it would dissipate. Possibly. I, I haven't seen too many food allergies quite this severe. Okay. Uh, but but that's the general idea. These red lesions with yep. the with the little uh, slightly raised hives are also irregular margins. They can kind of come and go. That's that's the the real hallmark of hives. Also, is that coming and going. Well, I hope that was helpful. Feel free to visit our website. It's in the description. And remember, I'm your pediatrician.